Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle is not only one of the coolest and most fun games on Nintendo Switch, but it also had one of the strangest lead up to release. Tons of rumors, for a while it was the worst kept secret in the Nintendoverse, leaks showing official art way beforehand, some very unnecessary Rabbid Peach hate before we saw just how cool of a character she would end up being, the game definitely had to win a lot of people over, and when it did. Rumors of a Mario and Rabbids crossover go back to as far as November of 2016. Ubisoft CEO Yves Guillemot teased that the company had a surprise up its sleeve for Nintendo Switch. I honestly remember being a little skeptical because even though Nintendo and Ubisoft had a great relationship in the past, a certain Wii U exclusive probably didn't inspire confidence in Ubisoft. I mean, Nintendo was coming off a very lukewarm console to say the least. Would they really invest in another exclusive for a Nintendo platform this early in its life cycle? Luckily for us, the answer ended up being yes. Even though the game had been rumored for a while, May 23rd had the game spring a leak so big that even Mario couldn't fix it. Artwork for the game fully leaked, and we even got some internal documents outlining the game's road to release. I find it hilarious that part of their plan was a surprise announcement. Honestly, Ubisoft, the surprise factor for this game had been long gone. The internet didn't know how to react, the prospect of the Mario and Rabbids universes clashing for a strategy RPG wasn't something that people were instantly going to be on board with. Rabbid Peach was already causing quite a bit of a stir, and this definitely wasn't the way Ubisoft wanted their big exclusive for Switch to be unveiled. Luckily, none of that would matter once people actually got to see and play the game. I was fortunate enough to be one of the first to play Kingdom Battle during an event held in San Francisco in late July 2017. It was there that it finally hit me. Rabbids and Mario coming together for an XCOM light style adventure actually makes way more sense than it has any right to, and it was fun. I spent 3 hours with the game and in that time I was more than sold. A cute aesthetic, simplified but still interesting tactical gameplay, fun boss battles, wacky comedy that surprisingly made me laugh, I knew I was in. I left the event wishing I could have secretly taken the game with me for my flight back home. Too bad I didn't have a mischievous rabbit of my own to do my dirty work. Once we finally got our hands on the full game, I was instantly sucked in. It might not be a game for everyone, but the way that the rabid version of characters and Mario, now with guns, Guns, control during battle was just plain fun to me. The feeling of getting perfect rankings in all the fights made up for the otherwise simplistic difficulty. Some encounters offered legit challenge, something we worried about from the onset. Upgrading your character's skill tree, finding new secret weapons, finding collectibles, it all fit together so well. Add a few references to other franchises into the mix and you have a game that was basically made for me. With great joy in my heart, it's time I watch Mario Kart. You're first and doing so well, but you come this tiny shell. <laughs> Fear them. <laughs> or not. So what the heck is a rabbit anyway? Let's briefly talk about their history. For anyone unaware, rabbits actually come from the Rayman universe, another one of Ubisoft's long-standing franchises. Rayman Raving Rabbids was their first appearance and it was released in 2006 and they were honestly just meant to be comic relief. Who would have thought that a Rayman spinoff would end up having multiple games, TV appearances, and an eventual game with one of the most recognizable figures in gaming. Going from pure throwaway comedic ploys to being in a game with Mario is a big glow up. Good job rabbits. They are obviously super crazy, super kooky, and can sometimes be a nuisance, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Well, what did you bring? Uh, this is a 
life-size replica of uh, uh, one of the weapons from this game. Wow. Cool, I'm sure you love it. I brought one for you. OK. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> wow. Woo. So. <laughs> so let's take a picture. <laughs> the reveal at E3 2017 was amazing, in my opinion. After all the leaks and rumors, Yves Guillemot had to still come out and give a presentation. He had to wow the fans, and the big surprise of the crossover was already spoiled. So then what? None other than Mr. Miyamoto came out to save the day, and the crowd absolutely loved it. That more than made up for the fact that we sort of knew what to expect, and those life-size replicas of the guns used in the game are insanely cool. Trust me. I've used that very gun to try to make creative director of the game Davide give me the keys to the Mushroom Kingdom. No such luck, more on him a little later. Moments like these are what make E3 fun. Yes, the fun stuff was spoiled. Gyoma and Miyamoto still went out and gave a heck of a presentation. And Davide, the emotion of the moment was a little too much for him. Look how overwhelmed with pride he is. This has to be one of the sweetest moments in E3 history. I met uh, Davide-san, who is the uh, creative director of this game. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, when, I, when I met Davide-san, I had just just one condition for this project. I said, whatever you do, don't try to make a, a jump game or a Mario platformer. Try to make a Mario game that has never been made before. And honestly, something like this was definitely never made before. Not only did the base game end up being a super fun adventure, but the post-release content soon followed with extra co-op challenges and eventually another crossover. The Donkey Kong Adventure portion of the game was released on June 26th, and owners of the season pass were able to get it a day early. This was a way bigger expansion than I thought was possible. It added roughly 8 hours of new content, and it even introduced new gameplay mechanics. DK was able to throw enemies and even cover blocks, the other new character, Rabbit Cranky, rode around Beepo and was able to attack in mid-air, Donkey Kong could swing from one area of the battlefield to the next with ease, and of course, Rabbit Peach was still Rabbit Peach. I found it crazy that she was the reason the rabbits even invaded the DK portion of the world, all because Rabbit Kong wanted revenge. Seriously, if you have never played the Donkey Kong Adventure DLC, get on it. It's even more difficult than the original game which already offered some challenge. I really loved it. So given the success of Kingdom Battle, what could be next? The game sits at an 85% on Metacritic, so it was definitely well received, and it sold over 2 million copies as of September 2018, maybe selling another million in the time since, we really don't know. It's been on sale an awful lot lately. Those numbers are more than good enough to warrant a sequel. We haven't heard from Davide's team in quite a while, so what could they be up to? Surely a sequel has at least been discussed. I wouldn't mind seeing Rabbit Peach continue her shenanigans with Mario in the Mushroom Kingdom. Ubisoft has proven that they are talented enough to make this weird mixture work. They can add deeper RPG elements, since the ones in Kingdom Battle were a little light. They can add more characters from Mario lore. A rabid Birdo or Toad would be hilarious to me for some reason. But what about those pesky rabbits invading another part of the Nintendo universe? Hyrule anyone? Look, I know Zelda is sacred, it's my favorite franchise of all time, and having the rabbits invade Hyrule sounds like a bonkers idea, but rabbits invading the Mushroom Kingdom sounded bonkers too, and that turned out pretty well. So I'm excited to see what the rabbits have in store. I hope something is happening, and my feeling is that it has to, just because this did so well, it was one of the best selling third party games on Switch for a long time, it probably continues to be. You can pick the game up, 
very often on sale, like I mentioned before, for as little as $25, and then you can get the Donkey Kong DLC for another $20 with the Season Pass. It is a phenomenal game. One of the must-own games on Switch. Now look, it isn't as good as Smash, it isn't as good as Breath of the Wild or Mario Odyssey, Splatoon, those are top tier. But for me, Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle is a top of the secondary, maybe tertiary games that you should get on Nintendo Switch. It is a must own. I fully believe that. And if you call yourself a Switch fan and a fan of Nintendo and you haven't experienced this yet, you owe it to yourself. Jump on board. But with all of that said, thank you for watching. I really appreciate you guys enjoying and sitting through this video. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to make videos like this for more series and more year one titles that I kind of want to have a little bit of a retrospective on. But with all of that said, thank you once again. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Hit the thumbs up. Let me know what you thought about Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle in the comments below. And if you haven't played it, like I said, jump on board as soon as you can. You owe it to yourself. Thank you once again. I am out of here. Switch Force.